Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can use Blender to turn a 3D design into an SVG. So I love Blender for 3D design, I used it to create this grenade and there's a link in the video description if you want to have a look at that and it covers how to make another style of grenade as well. But one limitation is that while we can render this, sometimes you want something a little bit more cartoony or a little bit more hand drawn and that's where SVGs can become really useful. SVGs are also really handy because we can use them for things like laser cutting, something I've been looking into recently. I'm going to do a video on using Blender for laser cutting at a later date, so if you want to watch that, do subscribe if you're not already subscribed. So in this we're just going to look at how to create this SVG using this file and some of the tips and tricks that I've picked up looking into this. A lot of elements of this have been covered by other YouTube creators, but there are certain bits that I just don't think have been covered well, and I wanted to talk about them because I think they're important tips and tricks. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate the add-on that's going to allow us to do this. Go to Edit and Preferences. I'm in Blender 4.2, so I'd need to go to Get Extensions first, and we're going to type in Free, and we want to install this Freestyle SVG Exporter. Once we've installed that, obviously I've already got it installed, we need to find it in the add-ons. So again, Freestyle, SVG Exporter, and click that Save Preferences, and you're good to go. Now to make this work, we need to actually turn this on. So we're going to come to our Render Properties, and I'll keep my render engine as Eevee, apparently that is faster, and scroll all the way down, and we've got to activate this in two places. Firstly, we've got to activate it here. I want it on a frame. And we're going to go down to here and we want to activate this as well. I don't know why we have to do it in both places, but we do. I'm guessing this deals with the internal parts and this deals with the line thickness. So we can fiddle around with line thickness if we want to. Then we need to go to the output and go all the way to the bottom. And this output file is important because it's where it's going to save this. So you can leave this as going to the temporary file. I'm going to select another file for this to go to. So click on the file button. I want this to go to this file. Just click accept and ignore the rest of this. It says it's gonna be a PNG, it's not, it's gonna create an SVG file automatically to that folder each time we try to do a render. Now, just like normal renders, we are gonna need a camera. So let's come to a pose that we like or some position that we like. I quite like that, maybe there. And then I'm gonna press Shift A and then I'm gonna bring in a camera. Now that's somewhere, well, here in the middle, I'm gonna press Alt, Control, and Zero on my number pad. And that's going to bring it to my view. And then N, I'm going to go to view. And then this button here, camera to view, means that it will stick with my view. So I can just go to somewhere about there, get that framed, and get rid of that. And then we're good to go. So that's camera's going to remain there, teeny tiny. And we can worry about everything over here. We can just basically ignore that it exists. At this point, we can come to our view layer get rid of all of these options, we don't really need them, and we've got this freestyle line SVG exporter and a lot of options down here. Now, we'll talk about these as we go through, but for now, just the fact that that's there is gonna work, and we're gonna go to render and render image. So this is our first go at our grenade, and there's definitely some problems here. We seem to be missing a lot of the lines and the definition. So let's go through with how we can deal with this. One, because you might want to fix it, but two, there is actually the option of doing these sort of things intentionally if you don't want a line, let's say, here. So let's go through these bit by bit and fix them. So the first thing is that we can only render lines that actually exist on the object. And at the moment, this is made up of separate parts. And for example, here, if I go into face mode, this face goes all the way through. There is no edge actually on this boundary, which is why we don't get the line. So what I need to do is Control, Shift, and Plus, that's using ball tools. You can Boolean this together however you want, and basically Boolean all these objects together where I want there to be a solid line at the join. Let's go to Render and Render Image, and we can see we've fixed a lot of those issues. But a couple of them still remain. We're missing a line here, and we're also missing a line actually on the bevel. We've got a nice gradual bevel here, and we're missing both of those. So let's deal with them. There are two ways of actually dealing with this. And what's nice about this is it gives you loads of control. The first is if I go into edge mode, I can select one of the edges that's missing. So we're missing this edge at the moment and this edge. Now I'm actually only gonna deal with this edge to begin with. And all I'm gonna do is press control and E. You could also go to your edge option up here. Control and E, and I'm gonna mark a freestyle edge. 
So it says, mark this to show it in freestyle. You'll notice it turns this greeny color, and then I'm gonna go to render and render image, but it hasn't worked. What an annoyance. I wonder why. Well, let's have a look at that. Back over here in our options, in our view layer, we get this freestyle information and for our line, and you can actually set up multiple lines in different colors. We'll have a look at that in a different video because it's probably not really important here, but it is very important for laser cutting. You have the options of saying what you want it to basically output as lines. And at the moment we've got the silhouette, any sharp creases, the border on the outside, and importantly, we don't have the edge mark ticked. And well, we want the edge mark, because we just made one. So I'm gonna tick that, render, render image, and now we get the entirety of that circle. Now what's really cool about this is, just bear in mind there's no line here, but if we wanted to, we could create a line. So let's just go into edge mode. I'm gonna control and R, actually let's do that here. So control and R there, control and B, bevel that out, and then I'm just gonna select this edge and this edge, control and E, and then we're gonna mark freestyle edge. Bear in mind, there is no sharp edge there. It is a flat surface, well, a cylinder, so the edge of a cylinder. But if I go to render and render image, we now get two lines around this. So this gives you a lot of control. I'm just gonna undo that, I don't really want them. Putting in lines where you want. For example, we could do something really cool by adding in extra lines or selecting lots of these lines on these edges if we wanted to and then maybe doing this like sort of cross hatching for something like shadow. Just to give an example of that, let's just select, let's say, I don't know, here, 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 and we can get more and more, and then we can get less, and then a bit less, and then a bit less, and then further apart, something like that. And then control and E, and then mark freestyle edge. If I then go to render and render image, you can see we get this sort of cross hatching there. And we could do this all the way up the side if we wanted to. Actually, this went a little bit far up there, but I was just doing it quickly. So you can see how this gives you a really nice level of control over where you get your lines. But we still are missing this edge here, this edge here, and I think we might be missing this edge here. Now, I could go in and individually put in these freestyle edges. But the other option I've got is we've got an angle here, which is a really odd angle threshold. I'm not sure how this works with 134, but basically the higher the number, the easier it will work. It's, I think, looking at the angle either side of the vertices. So if I want to put these edges in, I'm just gonna show this again. So we're missing an edge here and here and at the top. So if I put this to, I played around with this earlier and about 150 worked. So render, render image, and suddenly all those lines are showing up. So I could have done that initial bit without using the freestyle edge if I wanted to, but I wanted to show you both methods. So now we're getting all of our lines. We've got rid of the lines that were missing because the objects weren't joined together, and we've used either freestyle edges or changing the angle to put in our other edges. So that's pretty much most of what we want to do. What if we want to add some color to this though, which seems like a logical step. Now there's actually a few places we have to do this. Where it says render, we have to come down to where it says SVG exporter and we need to click fill contours. That's really important. Otherwise this won't work and you're gonna get very frustrated. And then once we've done that, we're gonna to come to our view layer and we need to come to the top here where we've got this freestyle line and we need to click export fills. And this will mean that we can now add in our colors. But there's one more trick to this, which is very important that we follow. So I'm gonna do this wrong to begin with because I'm gonna do it the way that you'd expect to do it and then correct it. So you'd expect, if we come into our materials preview, that we come to our material for this object, we're gonna add a new material, and we can change our color for this. I'm gonna put this a very over the top green. So cool, we go to render, render image, and we get our green grenade showing up on our render. But importantly, if I go to the file where this is saved and find this file and open it, we'll notice it's not green. It is actually a slight gray shade, which seems to imply something's happened. We've got the fill, but it is not the green that we selected. And the reason for that is that this does not work off of our material preview and the materials that we set up here on the surface. Instead, it works off the viewport display. And if in this material, notice, it's still green here, and we'll leave it green just to demonstrate this. 
If I close down the surface and move all the way down, we get viewport display. It's probably going to be closed. But we get viewport display, and I'm going to turn this one to red, just for the sake of demonstrating it. So we'll notice in the viewport display it's red, in the materials preview it's green, and if I go to render and render image, it's still green. But if I come to where the file is saved, and notice it does overwrite the file each time, and this is the new one, if I double click on this, it's now red. The original one was grey, this one now is red. It works off of the viewport display, which is obviously something very important to consider. Now what I'm actually going to do is add two materials to this and there is one other limitation that we need to be aware of. So what we're going to do is actually add a new material. Notice it shows us green because it shows what the material is. So I'm actually going to change this in the viewport display to be a sort of khaki-ish green colour. So let's come over here, let's go something there-ish. Okay. Notice, pay more attention to the colour here than what you see on the screen, especially because I've got this being having a red tint, so it doesn't interact perfectly. In fact, I could change this matte cap to be grey, and this will give a better representation of what it is. So we've got the green, but I want another material as well. So new material, new, the surface is irrelevant. Let's come to our viewport shader. I'm going to go for a light grey colour. We can put the metallic up. It's really not going to do anything in an SVG, but if you want to, and we're going to come back and I'm actually going to change everything to this material. So let's A, click and assign that so it's grey. Then I'm going to come in and let's go into face mode, x-ray mode. I'm going to select all of these faces about there. And we'll control and plus on our number pad to get those. Go to the green and we'll assign those to be green. So now we've got grey and green. Cool, pretty grenade-like. And this is where we get a problem. If I go to render and render image, we get our image. It's not really relevant because it's not what the SVG has. And if I come to the SVG and open that, we get a bit of a mess. Basically, I haven't found a way of sorting this. If you know one, let me know. But from what I can tell, this does not work very well with multiple layers of color. It gets confused. So I personally probably would either just do one color and then go and fiddle with that in something like Inkscape which is a free SVG program. Alternatively, your other option is to break this into separate parts. So I've got one part here, so the bottom, the middle, and then the top. Okay, and I've just done that by ripping verts away and separating this into different parts. So we can quite easily do that. And then all we need to do is come over to our render options, which is shown by the camera. And we can say, for example, that we don't want cylinder one and cylinder two, render and render image. So that is our middle. Come to where that's being saved, check it, yep. Perfectly fine, let's rename that middle. Back to Blender, get rid of the cylinder four, come to cylinder two, render that, so that's the base. Come back to our file, let's call this base. And then finally, cylinder one, which is gonna be the top, render that, there we go. Let's check that, yep, perfectly fine. We'll rename this top. And then we could just come to a program like Inkscape, which deals with SVGs, drag those in, that's OK, OK, and OK. We're going to have to fiddle around with these in the positions, but nothing too bad. So let's just make sure that's in about the right place. And then we should be able to find that base. And let's move that to probably about there. So there we go. That is our grenade. Easy to do. Just a little bit of fiddling if you want some different coloration on the different parts. Hopefully you found that useful and I've covered all of the different problems that you might find and the limitations that you get with this add-on. This file for the grenade as a 3D file in Blender is going to be up on the Patreon and I'll put that up for any level. So if you're at whatever level on the Patreon, you can download this and use it for whatever you want. But most importantly, you can play around with this if you want to try and get the same as what I've done. If you did find this video useful and think it deserves it, please do hit that like button. It helps share it for other people that might be looking to do this same thing. And remember, if you do want to see that video of me then using this to create 3D design files for a laser cutter, and why I actually really like using Blender to do that, then hit that subscribe button and the bell button if you're not already subscribed so you hear when that video is out. Have a great day, guys.